The Lord be with you. I'm Deacon Keith Fournier, and our first reading is from the book of Daniel, chapter 13. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim. He was married to a woman called Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, a woman of great beauty. And she was God-fearing, for her parents were worthy people and had instructed their daughter in the law of Moses. Joachim was a very rich man and had a garden by his house. He used to be visited by a considerable number of the Jews, since he was held in greater respect than any other man. Two elderly men had been selected from the people that year to act as judges. Of such, the Lord had said, wickedness has come to Babylon through the elders and judges posing as guides to the people. These men were often at Joachim's house and all who were engaged in litigation used to come to them. At midday, when the people had gone away, Susanna would take a walk in her husband's garden. The two elders, who used to watch her every day as she came in to take her walk, gradually began to desire her. They threw reason aside, making no effort to turn their eyes to heaven and forgetting the demands of virtue. So they waited for a favorable moment. And one day, Susanna came as usual, accompanied only by two young maidservants. The day was hot, and she wanted to bathe in the garden. There was no one about except the two elders, spying on her from their hiding place. She said to the servants, Bring me some oil and balsam and shut the garden door while I bathe. Hardly were the maids gone than the two elders sprang up and rushed upon her. Look, they said, the garden door is shut. No one can see us. We want to have you. So give in and let us. Refuse and we shall both give evidence that a young man was with you and that this was why you sent your maids away. Susanna sighed. I'm trapped, she said. Whatever I do. If I agree, it means death for me. If I resist, I cannot get away from you. But I prefer to fall innocent into your power than to sin in the eyes of the Lord. She then cried out as loud as she could. The two elders began shouting too, putting the blame on her. And one of them ran to open the garden door. The household, hearing the shouting in the garden, rushed out by the side entrance to see what had happened to her. Once the elders had told their story, the servants were totally taken aback since nothing of this sort had ever been said of Susanna. Next day, a meeting was held at the house of her husband, Joachim. These two elders arrived, full of their wicked plea against Susanna to have her put to death. They addressed the company Susanna, Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah and wife of Joachim. She was sent for and came accompanied by her parents, her children, and all her relations. All her own people were weeping. And so were all the others who saw her. The two elders stood up with all the people around them and laid their hands on her head tearfully, she turned her eyes to heaven, her heart confident in God. The elders then spoke, while we were walking by ourselves in the garden, this woman arrived with two maids. She shut the garden door and then dismissed the servants. A young man who had been hiding went over to her and they lay together. From the end of the garden where we were, we saw this crime taking place and hurried toward them. Though we saw them together, 
we were unable to catch the man. He was too strong for us. He opened the door and took to his heels. We did, however, catch this woman and ask her who the young man was. She refused to tell us. That is our evidence. Well, since they were elders of the people and judges, the assembly accepted their word. Susanna was condemned to death. She cried out as loud as she could, Eternal God, you know all secrets and everything before it happens. You know that they have given false evidence against me. And now I must die, innocent as I am of everything their malice has invented against me. The Lord heard her cry. And as she was being led away to die, he roused the Holy Spirit residing in a young boy called Daniel, who began to shout, I am innocent of this woman's death. At this, all the people turned to him and asked, what do you mean by that? Standing in the middle of the crowd, he replied, are you so stupid? children of Israel, as to condemn a daughter of Israel unheard and without troubling to find out the truth? Go back to the scene of the trial. These men have given false evidence against her. And the people hurried back. And the elders said to Daniel, come and sit with us and tell us what you mean, since God has given you the gifts that elders have. So Daniel said, keep the men well apart from each other, for I want to question them. When the men had been separated, Daniel had one of them brought to him. You grow old in your wickedness, he said to him. And now the sins of your earlier days have overtaken you, you with your unjust judgments your condemnation of the innocent, your acquittal of the guilty. Although the Lord has said, you must not put the innocent and upright to death. Now then, since you saw her so clearly, tell me what sort of tree you saw them lying under. He replied, under an acacia tree. Daniel said, indeed. Your lie recoils on your own head. The angel of God has already received from him your sentence and will cut you in half. He dismissed the man, ordered the other to be brought, and said to him, Son of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you. Lust has led your heart astray. This is how you have been behaving with the daughters of Israel. And they have been too frightened to resist. But here is a daughter of Judah who could not stomach your wickedness. Now then tell me, what sort of tree you surprised them under? He replied, under an aspen tree. And Daniel said, Indeed, your lie recoils on your own head. The angel of God is waiting with a sword to rend you in half and destroy the pair of you. Then the whole assembly shouted, Blessing God, the Savior of those who trust in him. And they turned on the two elders, whom Daniel had convicted of false evidence out of their own mouths. As the law of Moses prescribes, they were given the same punishment as they had schemed to inflict on their neighbor. They were put to death. And thus, on that day, an innocent life 
was saved. And our response is taken from Psalm 23. Yahweh is my shepherd. I lack nothing. In grassy meadows, he lets me lie. By tranquil streams, he leads me to restore my spirit. He guides me in paths of saving justice as befits his name. Even were I to walk in a ravine as dark as death, I should fear no danger, for you are at my side. Your staff and your crook are there to soothe me. You prepare a table for me under the eyes of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup brims over. Kindness and faithful love pursue me every day of my life. I make my home in the house of Yahweh for all time to come. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. When Jesus spoke to the people again, he said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light of life. At this, the Pharisees said to him, you are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not true. And Jesus replied, even though I am testifying on my own behalf, my testimony is still true because I know where I have come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. But if I judge, my judgment will be true because I am not alone. The one who sent me is with me. And in your law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I testify on my own behalf, but the father who sent me testifies on my behalf too. They asked him, where is your father then? And Jesus answered, you do not know me, nor do you know my father. If you did know me, you would know my father as well. He spoke these words in the treasury while teaching in the temple. No one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord.